welcome back to my little channel. This is going to be the second installment in the series of Why Did Fascism Happen? And basically this is going to be a video explaining terminology. Because some people responded to me personally that the first video I made was um, maybe not the best, but the main thing I heard is that you use terminology and you kind of assume people know what you're talking about. And because of that, you might miss the point. And you know what? I'm grateful for that bit of criticism. So this video is going to be me trying to explain the terms I used and why they are a problem. The first term I will use is Bolshevism. Not a lot of people remember what Bolshevism is, because in all fairness, nowadays we don't say Bolshevism anymore, we say communist. But Bolshevism was what communism was before communism existed. Bolshevism is often seen as the first step towards communism, or some people would say socialism is the first step towards communism. But one could argue that Bolshevism is indeed the first step, whereas communism uh, is the end goal, socialism is merely one of the ways. Did socialism come from Bolshevism or did socialism uh, predate Bolshevism? Now, this is the hard part, because the Bolshevik movement in Russia started at the beginning of the 19th century, sorry, beginning at the 20th century, 1903. But Marx wrote his book somewhat before that. So one could argue socialism predates Bolshevism. And where I understand what you say, I also think you're wrong. Because Bolshevism, the movement, started in 1903. But Bolshevism, the psychological, no, philosophical movement, started well before that. And is Bolshevism a problem? Well, yes it is. Okay, so how old is Bolshevism? And here comes a very difficult part, because this is something most Christians will not like. Bolshevism is as old as Christianity. The thing is, Bolshevism is far more totalitarian, but the idea of Bolshevism are already written in the Bible. And this is why it's always been such a difficult philosophy to get rid of, socialism and Bolshevism. Because we like the idea of a society that takes care of us. But in Christianity, that society did not turn violent. After all, Jesus said, turn the other cheek. If someone strikes you, turn, turn the other cheek. Don't believe people will like you because you're Christian. Assume to be hated. So he, Jesus, in Christianity, made Christianity the underdog position. Whereas in socialism and in Bolshevism, the same theories apply when it comes to sharing and taking care of the meek, because the meek will inherit the earth, but their methods have become far more violent. Funny enough, this is what we also see in the Torah, which is the predecessor of Christianity, the Jewish faith. Again, not all, hashtag not all, but Bolshevism is as old as Judaism. But Judaism isn't Bolshevism either. What's the difference? Again, religions have their own form of totalitarianism. Bolshevism, socialism, has its own form of totalitarianism too. There lies the main difference. A Bolshevik will push for the rule of the proletariat, bloody different word, I know, against the uh, ruling classes, which are often seen as the bourgeoisie, and they will do so by force, something that Christianity will not allow. That force was allowed to be used in Judaism, but the, pro the proletariat wasn't the ruling caste in Judaism. So it's changing around. The idea of a society taking care of each other is a nice one. It's, it's a positive one. It's one that we like. And therein lies the treacherousness of Bolshevism and communism and socialism. Because it's okay to take care of each other, 
but it's not okay to be forced to take care of each other. So this is the problem with Bolshevism. Bolshevism, of course, gave rise to many other movements, fascism being one of them, but in itself it also became a problem to the rest of the world. As communism, we noticed that the Western world started gearing up against this, especially in America during the 50s. But why did they do so? Why was Bolshevism seen as such a huge problem? For that, we go to Germany in the 1990s, 1918, 1919. 1-8-1-9, not 8-0-9-0. 1-8-1-9. Because in this period of time, the Bolsheviks created the Spartacus Revolution. Now, why was this such a terrible problem? The Spartacus Revolution basically was based on Bolshevism socialism, and they wanted to overthrow the Weimar Republic. This is, in all fairness, one of the main reasons why Nazis grew so big in Germany. Because the Bolsheviks that started the Spartacus Revolution were expelled from Soviet Russia well before the Russian Revolution. Most of these people were Jews, and most of these fled the Russian country because the Tsar would have had them killed. And Germany opened their borders to them. The betrayal of the Spartacus Revolution set off the hatred of the Jews in Nazi Germany. Now, historically speaking, of course, there are many things that the Jews did wrong throughout history. Just like any other group did things wrong throughout history. And a lot of people who now hate the Jews will use this as argument uh, see, they did this wrong and they did that wrong. But if we look back at Germ sorry, at Germany and indeed Poland, they let in the Jews because they fled the Bolsheviks and they were welcomed. But the Spartacus Revolution the Spartacus Revolution made very clear the intentions of the Bolshevik Jews. Are all Jews Bolsheviks? No, of course not. Therefore, not all Jews should be blamed for this. But Bolshevism was indeed a movement that was pushed by a certain Jewish sub-community. This is my explanation of why Bolshevism is a problem and what Bolshevism is. Bolshevism is the direct father of communism, where socialism is the mother. And yes, I know, they're basically both from the same ideology. There is a slight difference, though. Socialism pretends to be good. Bolshevism pretends to be the final solution, not unlike the Germans had the final solution against the Jews. It's not nice, but this is what authoritarian comes to. Bolshevism is an authoritarian movement, as were the Nazis. They were an authoritarian movement. Socialism in itself is an authoritarian movement. This is why we in the West need to recognize that there is a reason why the hardest path, sorry, why the hardest path is the path less traveled, and why socialism and communism and Bolshevism and all their versions, fascism, Nazism, these are easy paths because they sound nice. They make it easier for the people. They're not. They're a danger. Anyway, this is my first explanationary video this is what bolshevism is and yes i linked to nazism fascism etc etc because in all fairness people like to think that they're different than each other but they're the same side of the coin the coin being totalitarianism or authoritarianism and individuality and you will find that all of these isms totalitarianism bolshevism communism fascism National Socialism, Socialism, are inherently totalitarian and authoritarian. They might be on slightly different scales or on slightly different nuances, but all of them are this. Anyway, here is my short explanation, <laughs> 10 minutes long, explanation for Bolshevism, criticism, questions, and etc etc are more than welcome like share and subscribe if you feel so inclined i do like to think what you think of this one 
Have a nice day.